Good morning. Today is Tuesday, uh, December the 7th in this 2021st year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brief explanation for a little difference in my appearance today. I had uh, basal cell cancer uh, early over my eyebrow and uh, had surgery on that today. Mohs surgery where they just take a very thin layer examine it under the microscope and come back and do more. Uh, Dr. Skavarka, high praises for his work. He got it uh, the first time, stitched me up with 11 stitches and uh, this big old compression bandage, which will come off tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow I may have a black eye, they said, from where the blood settles, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it's all good. It's a part of being a child of the sun who ran around with no sunscreen as a child and uh, through teenage years getting that good tan and uh, we pay the price for that in later years having learned uh, the importance of application of sunscreen uh, maybe a little too late for this type but nonetheless nothing that's been real harmful um, today uh, we have a cloudy day there was little bits of uh, speckles of water on the windshield, but not enough to wet it. Uh, so I don't know if we're going to get some much needed rain finally, but it is a chill in the air and, uh, and we shall see. I hope it's a good day wherever you are. Today we read from Luke in the 18th chapter. Taking the twelve, he said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. And everything that is written of the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be delivered to the Gentiles, and will be mocked, and shamefully treated, and spit upon. And they will scourge him and kill him. And on the third day he will rise. But they understood none of these things. This saying was hid from them, and they did not grasp it, what was said. As he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside, begging and hearing a multitude going by. He inquired what this meant. And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he cried, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, let me receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus. Alexander Schumann, uh, who lived between 1921 and 1983, writing from his writing for the life of the world. The church is the entrance into the risen life of Christ, communion in life eternal, joy and peace in the Holy Spirit, and it is the expectation of the day without evening, of the kingdom, not of any other world, but of the fulfillment of all things and all life in Christ, in him Death itself has become an act of life, for he has filled it with himself, with his love and light. In him all things are yours, whether the world or life or death or things present or things to come. All are yours, and you are Christ's, and Christ is God's. 1 Corinthians 3, 21-23 and if I make this new life mine, mine this hunger and thirst of the kingdom, mine this expectation of Christ, 
mine the certitude that Christ is life. My very death will be an act of communion with life. For neither life nor death can separate us from the love of Christ. I do not know when and how the fulfillment will come. I do not know when all things will be consummated in Christ. I know nothing about the whens and the hows, but I know that in Christ this great passage, the Pasha of the world has begun, that the light of the world to come comes to us in the joy and in the peace of the Holy Spirit. For Christ is risen and life reigneth. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the prayer you taught us, we pray your kingdom come, and so it will and so it does. We see measures of it in the love, in the care that we can offer one another. We see it in the Christ who approaches the man who is blind and restores his sight and attributes it to his faith, his confidence that Christ could do such a thing. And we rejoice for that gift of healing. We give you thanks, O Lord, for this day. I thank you for physicians that care for the little things that are nuisances to our lives and our existence. For surgery accomplished and pray God's good hand will continue the healing. I give thanks, O Lord, this day for life and for family and for loved ones. I give thanks, O Lord, for the blessings of light that shows us the pathways we will walk in the day and that you give to us the night that we might find rest and renewal and restoration for the coming of the new day. We ask your blessings upon each of us. We pray your hand of care and love to abide with the many in this world that continue to worry over COVID-19 and its variants, with those whose anxiety levels have been so increased, their worlds have been so transformed, and some, yes, for the good, but others, not so. We ask that a healing might be brought to this whole world as trouble brews in lands far away. Might the conversations between President Biden and President Putin in Russia, might those be productive to avoid war and conflict and, and further destruction of lives and property, help them to come to resolve over the Ukraine and protect those people that are in harm's way give to those who would serve in our country's service in the military, particularly in this time of a season of love and family and your Christ renewal in this world of his life born again, that they being absent from families might be drawn closer one to another, give them protection and care and our gratitude for their serving and be with public servants who are out each and every day caring for property and life and limb for serving as they are able. Give them your encouragement and protection and help. And we lift up before you this day those who we continually pray for, for my grandson Sam, for, for Sarah and for Becky as they seek healing from cancer. For, for Nikki, Heiser, and Tom, and Lisa as they struggle with health and life and age in their household. For each in our congregational families that we come into your care and your keeping. For those that need encouragement in times that seem to be times of, of expectations of joy and hope that their sadness might not overcome them and they might find a measure of joy in you. 
can hear now our concerns for those for whom we lift up in the silence of this moment. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen offer this simple little testimony. As I sat down to do devotions, I had an a oncoming headache from the, the surgery as the uh, Novocaine and everything has worn off and it's starting to ache a bit up there. And uh, as I end now devotions, I, I feel a lot better. So thank you, Lord, for that gift and for the relief that dwelling in your word and in your presence can be of great help in times of great need and in times of little need. Blessings of the day. Amen. <laughs>